Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg and this is the Audiophiliac Daily Show and today is a very special episode. I have never actually done anything quite like this before so <laughs> give me some room here because there's a lot of information to get through but it's actually a, basically a simple subject and it's about biamping your speakers. Now I'm not talking about active biamping, I'm not talking about active speakers with DSP and uh, no. That, that's not this subject. I'm talking about the speakers that you already have in your system. Actually, any speaker that has a double set of binding posts in the back it could be used for by wiring your speakers or by amping them, and that's what we're going to be doing today. So any set of speakers, just you probably already know, but if you're not sure, turn it around and look, and I'll show you some pictures of some by wire connected speakers, and that's that's all you need to do by amping. Well, that and <laughs> two amplifiers. Preferably two identical amplifiers would be by far the easiest way of doing it. But, you know, I was thinking as I was preparing to do this episode that AV receivers, you know, home theater receivers, some of them have by amping capability already built in. That is that you can use uh, one set of uh, amplifiers to drive the woofer and another set of amplifiers to drive the tweeter and the tweeter and mid-range of the speakers that you already have, assuming they have those double connectors. So you look on the back of the receiver and you'll see front, uh, center, surround, blah, blah, blah. and then you'll also see biamp, or you look in the owner's manual and explain how to do it. But that's a fairly common feature with AV receivers. Now I'm talking about using an AV receiver in a stereo system. Before we go any further, this is a crucially important step, a, a mandatory step. <laughs> got to do this. And you got to go, go back there behind the speaker and you'll see there's a jumper, a piece of metal that connects the, the binding post, usually vertically. And you have to uh, unscrew the binding post and remove those those pieces of metal, or sometimes it's a wire that connects those connectors. Connects those connectors, right? Anyway, you got to do that. That's that's must. Then after that, it's pretty simple. You use one set of your speaker cables to go to the woofers, and then another set of speaker cables to go to the top or the other set of binding posts, and you're done, right? Now, as I said earlier, you, if you have two identical amplifiers, now. This all really started, the idea for doing this video today is a couple of weeks ago, I had briefly two uh, Deckware Zen triode amplifiers, the 2.3 watt per channel amplifiers I've been raving about recently. Now I don't have the two anymore, but for, for a week or two I had two of them and I thought, hey, well, I should try this biamping thing. And I did, and it was, really, really amazing because all the things that I like about the Zen Triode amplifier, which is a lot, they all got better. Now it's weird because it's not really a difference of power. And this is one of the things I have to underscore here that when you buy amplifier speaker, the gains are not so much that you have, it plays louder. Or, it's not really about that. It's, it, there's more going on. So anyway, to go from 2.3 watts from one Zen triode amplifier to two of them, so I had 4.6 watts. Well, that wasn't going <laughs> to rock, rock anybody's world, but the difference in dimensionality and inner detail and hearing more low-level detail, that, that kind of stuff, that all got better. The, the speaker did, the speakers, uh, and I'll tell you the speakers I used shortly, but the speakers did seem to have more heft to them, a little more oomph to them. So that was nice, but and I'm going to get more into the details of what I heard when I went from one amp to two. So from one Zen triode to using two uh, side by side like that. But I also did it with two Shit Ajir amplifiers, and I also did it with first watt F7 and F8. Because they're not the same amplifier, but they were close enough that I could pull it off. So the speakers, the speakers that I used were Klipsch Cornwall 4s, uh, Klipsch RP600Ms, and uh, let's see, oh, the BMW 607S2, and uh, yeah, I think that was it. But it was mostly uh, the Cornwalls and the RP600Ms. Those were the main speakers I used. I tried some others along the way. 
Okay, so let's go to the next step. And some of you are probably already thinking, well, Steve, how do I do this? Well, if your preamplifier has two sets of preamp outputs, two main outputs, well, then it's easy. One set of outputs goes to amplifier A, and the next one goes to amplifier B, and you're good to go. But most preamps don't have two outputs. They usually have just one. Well, the workaround solution to that is pretty straightforward. You're going to get a Y connector, and then you're going to take that one output and drive two power amplifiers with it. So with solid state preamplifiers, it's, it's, it's a piece of cake. You're going to take that Y connector. I'll show you some pictures of what that Y connectors look like. You'll hook that up to your preamp and hook it up to stereo amplifier A and stereo amplifier B, and you're pretty much good to go. But with two preamplifiers, there's one little spec you got to check out and find out the output impedance of your tube preamplifier. Now, some of them are fairly low output impedance, like meaning under 100 ohms. But if it's 200 or 500 or 1,000 ohms, then there's an issue in terms of impedance matching with the Y splitter and the two power amplifiers. Because if those two power amplifiers are relatively low in their input impedance, let's say less than 10,000 ohms, uh, that might not be a good match with, if, for this idea of biamping. Let's just put it that way. If you're unsure, don't ask me. <laughs> ask the manufacturer of the preamplifier or check the owner's manual. But basically, with low output impedance preamplifiers, which is pretty much all solid state and many two preamplifiers, it's not an issue. If the, preamp if the two preamplifier has a very high output impedance, uh, then you should probably check with the company that made the preamp. Anyway, so that's the one little thing I needed to bring up just to be extra clear about that. <laughs> if Was that clear? I'm not sure it was. But anyway, I'm doing, I'm doing the best I can. Solid state preamps, easy. Two preamps, if it has low output impedance under 200 ohms or so, you're good to go. So, you know, like I said, I started with the two Zen triodes. That, that's really where it all began, this experimenting with uh, bi-amplification. And I was amazed that, so I went from 2.3 watts per channel to now having two of them, so I had 4.6 watts per channel driving each speaker, in this case, the Cornwall 4s. And, <clears throat> well, the, the difference, the main difference I heard was just this bigger, more dimensional uh, sound stage. It had more body, more, more weight to it. Uh, the bass, it, it's not that 4.6 watts is going to be a wham-bam, high-powered experience, right? It's not. But in terms of weight and fullness and a sense of ease, they were significantly better with the two Zen triodes. And returning to a single Zen triode, it sounded a little limpy. <laughs> it did. It definitely did. So that was... That's where I started really thinking, i got to cover this. I really want to make a video about it. But then I thought, well, I do have a, a shit Ajir here. What if I put the Ajir on the bottom, on the woofer, and put the Zen triode on the top, on the mid-range tweeter? Now, I, as I said earlier, it's by far the easiest way to do this is with two identical amplifiers. But since the Zen triode has a volume control on the front of it, I could more or less match the level of the Shirajir with the Zen triode because, like I said, the Zen had its own volume control. So I set that up, and I have to say, I mean, the idea is looks looks great on paper, right? That you have a tube amplifier on the mid-range of tweeter, so you get the, the a lot of the wonderfulness of tubes on the mids and top, and then you have the, the more powerful solid state amplifier driving the woofer. Yeah, it seems like a good idea. <laughs> but it didn't take long to realize that that match just did not work. It just sounded weird. It did not sound in any way good. <laughs> it did not sound as good as the Ajir. It didn't sound as good as the Zen Triode. It just was kind of a mess, just a muddle sounding mess. So later for that. The thing is, I only had one Ajir. So I checked in with uh, Shit, asked them if they could lend me a second one for this, this spy amp thing. And they said, oh, sure. So they sent one along. So then I had two Ajiers. So then I did a conventional biamp with the two Ajiers. And that, again, it was noticeable. 
definitely an improvement. Now, some people might say it shouldn't make any difference using one amplifier to drive the speakers or two, that it doesn't seem like on paper that it could make enough of a difference or any difference. One of my techie engineering friends said, eh, I can't make any difference. Of course, he never tried it. So, In any case, I heard a difference and I kept going back and forth. It was kind of really a pain in the ass to redo all the connections every time I went back and forth. But for you guys, I did it. And I kept hearing a bigger sense of space, more dimension, more body to each instrument and each voice. Uh, I, I was impressed. Now, is it worth your investment of doubling the price of your, of your power amplifier to do it? This, this part I can't say. I really can't say that for sure. <clears throat> now, unfortunately, I didn't have the two Zen triodes when I got in the RP600Ms to keep around here as part of my reference system. So I can't say how that worked out. I'm really frustrated I didn't get to try that. But I did have the two Shit Agiers and I tried that on the RP600Ms. And again, I really liked what I heard. I like the speaker a lot as you probably picked up by now. But yeah, I didn't feel the difference was as great as I heard on the Cornwall 4s. As, as I'm using these, as I'm doing the biamping, I'm not telling you it's a difference of power delivery or it plays louder with greater ease. I mean, maybe a little bit, but that's not the reason to do it. Not, not in my experience. As, as with everything, everything is an experiment. I, ca I can't guarantee your results. I can just tell you what I experienced with these various combinations of amplifiers and speakers. But I will underscore that using different amplifiers, especially tube and solid state, is a much riskier proposition in terms of riskier in terms of success. Not that you're going to blow anything up or anything. It's just that having different kinds of amplifiers driving the woofer versus the tweeter. Mm, well, you tell me. You tell me if you've done that and it had success. I'm not saying it, it can't. I'm just saying I did. That's and as I stated in the front of this video, you absolutely positively have to remove the jumpers on the back of, on the binding post before you attempt to do this. If you don't, you will short up the amplifiers and possibly cause damage. So don't screw up, not even one time. <laughs> one time is maybe the last time. So don't do that. It, it, and don't be uh, you know, overly cautious and don't do this at all. Just remove the jumpers before you hook up two amplifiers to your speaker. That's all. That's all I'm saying here, right? So it seems it's a pretty. Uh, it might seem complicated. It's not that complicated, but it is important, by the way, that you observe polarity, meaning at the speaker connection end and at the amplifier connection end, that all the plus and minuses are exactly the same. If you mess up one of them, well, you're not going to blow anything up. But it's not going to sound right. I say that because I managed to screw that up more than once, right? So plus to plus, minus to minus, and you will be good to go. And when you make a mistake, it is kind of obvious, so you won't get too far. But anyway, it's important to check. That's kind of it, you know. Uh, now, as I said earlier, if you happen to have an AV receiver with bi-amp capability, and it'll usually say so on the back panel, or you could check the owner's manual. Give that a try. Definitely, why not? It's sitting there, and you got the speakers, presumably, with uh, a capability. See what happens. And of course, if any of you guys have already done it, bi-amping like this, please share your experiences in the comments. If you had positive experiences, sure, tell us about it. If you had negative experiences or you said, eh, it doesn't make any difference. Tell us what you heard. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. If you like what I do, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, you could also check out the Patreon at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. You know, by the way, guys, I have been experimenting making really short videos uh, for IGTV, for Instagram video. So I, I'm on Instagram, and that's Steve.Guttenberg. You can find my Instagram. 
and also these videos that I've been making. They're kind of like previews and just odd thoughts that go through my head from time to time. Throwing up these three, four minute videos on IGTV so you could check those out. Uh, what else? Well, we got, as you well know, playlists. I got playlists for speaker reviews and headphone reviews and music reviews, all kinds of cool things. You know, I always talk about the famous people that I've interviewed, but just interviews with uh, local audiophiles in, in Brooklyn and Manhattan that I've done in the pre-COVID days, those are really nice because, first of all, they're relatable. They're, they're like everyday audiophiles and they just happen to have really cool or interesting systems that I went into their homes and made a video. I mean, the last one I made was actually into the COVID time with James. That was a lot of fun because it kind of reminded me of what I used to do a lot more of. So anyway, uh, they are in the Audiophiliac for a day uh, playlist, which I will link to that right over there, right there, and uh, look for some of those. So, so now, I I, now I think I can say my work here is at last complete. So thank you again for watching. And I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.